Models suggest faults are linked through South California's Imperial Valley, which of course is the area of the Salton Sea Volcano and mud pots. I'm sitting here looking at Smithsonian Institute National Museum of Natural History Global Volcanism Program. It's got a beautiful picture of uh, an aerial picture of the Salton Buttes. It says that its primary volcano type is lava domes. Last known eruption is 210 AD. Uh, so it's recently, of course, what's happening is that there's, there's always activity there. The mud pots are, are uh, continually rumbling underneath. So um, it's also, as we see, a part of the Southern San Andreas Fault System. It's just south of the Garlic Fault that has recently given the earthquakes at Ridgecrest. And we see that we have a tremendous amount of quakes every single day still there going on. Some going south, meandering south towards the Salton Butte area, Salton Sea area, and others going towards Mount Whitney, just south of the Long Valley Caldera area. Now, concerning this article by the Seismological Society of America. Now, this is uh, given to us by scientists, by geological societies. It's not something I'm coming out of my uh, thoughts and ideas and uh, fantasies out of my mind. This is facts given to us by uh, geologists. So I'll leave links below for you for this, of course. This is on Science Daily. The uh, Seismological Society of America. New mechanical modeling of the network of active strike-slip faults in California's Imperial Valley. That's the southern area of the San Andreas Fault, as you can see here from the various uh, images. The uh, California's Imperial Valley suggests that the faults are continuously linked from the southern San Andreas Fault through the Imperial Fault to the Cerro Pieto Prieto Fault further to the south of the valley. So not only is the San Andreas zipped and locked with the Garland, Garland Fault, which is on the west, which is zipped and locked with the Walker Lane Fault System to the east, uh, the East California Shear Zone, as they call it, that's part of the Walker Lane Fault System. But also you have this area here as well, the Imperial Valley, the Cerro Prieto Fault, zipped in locked in with uh, the southern San Andreas Fault. New mechanical modeling of the network of active strike-slip faults in California's Imperial Valley suggests that faults are continuously linked from the southern San Andreas Fault through the Imperial Fault to the Cerro Prieto Fault further to the south of the valley. Although more studies are needed to understand the slip rates and exact relationships between these faults, Linkage could increase the likelihood that they might rupture together and cause larger than expected shaking in Los Angeles, Imperial, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties in California. Jacob Dorset and colleagues suggest in their analysis published in the Bulletin of the Seismological Society of America. Uh, I have to tell you that this article was written June 12th. So it was about a month or so, three weeks before the July 4th earthquake in Ridgecrest. Okay, so they were talking about this in this area before the uh, 6.4 July 4th quake and the 7.1 magnitude July 5th quake, and it just happened to have come out had come out with this uh, article. Uh, coincidentally, yes. Now, while its faults may not be as well known as the San Andreas and San Jacinto faults to the north, the region has hosted several damaging earthquakes, including a magnitude 6.9 rupture along the Imperial Fault in 1940 and a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake on the same fault in 1979, along with a magnitude 6.2 and 6.6 .6 earthquakes on the Elmore Ranch and Superstition Hills faults 
respectively, in 1989. He said, we know these faults, that, these, that faults here have hosted earthquakes in the past, but understanding the three-dimensional fault shapes in the area, and specifically how the faults connect to and interact with one another, we saw that, of course, with the 6.4 7.1 magnitude in Ridgecrest, each of those quakes was in a different fault, uh, transversing, crisscrossing each other. So this is what's happening here in this area as well. So the, the three-dimensional fault shapes in the area, especially how the faults connect uh, to and interact with one another, is necessary to better understand earthquake behavior. This project to determine fault linkage and how it relates to fault slip rates here is a necessary first step towards the future goal of mitigating risk. This is what co-author Elizabeth Madden at Universidad de Brasilia, who first advanced the idea of the BSSA study, said. Dorset, who worked on the study as an undergraduate at Appalachia State University and is now pursuing a master's degree in Indiana University, said the new analysis could prove useful to seismologists working on large-scale computational models to better forecast California earthquakes. Quote, Our work suggests that the San Andreas effectively does not end at the Salton Sea, but is most likely physically connected to the Imperial Fault and then to the Cerro Prieto Fault in Mexico, he said. All other factors equal, if the San Andreas is connected to these other structures, then it makes the chances of a longer rupture and a larger magnitude more likely. The system of faults in the Imperial Valley accommodates most of the motion between the Pacific and the North American tectonic plates in Southern California. The complex spatial arrangement of the fault systems, however, makes it difficult to know whether this motion is mostly transferred via slip along major faults or through significant off-fault deformation of the crust, Dorset added. To better understand slip rates and linkage among these faults, the researchers created a, a suit of 3D models that simulate long-term Pacific North American plate motion based, basing the initial fault geometry on the SCEC Community Fault Model 5.0 a comprehensive database of known faults in Southern California. They developed four geologically plausible fault configurations with different degrees of connectivity between the Imperial Fault of the Coachella southern part of the San Andreas Fault to the north and to the Cerro Prieto Fault in the south. They then compared slip rates along those faults as suggested by the mechanical models with average fault slip rates calculated by the Uniform California Earthquake Rupture Model Version 3, or UCERF3, the most recent earthquake rupture forecast for California. Their model results suggest the Coachella San Andreas Fault, the Brawley Seismic Zone, the Imperial Fault, and the Cerro Prieto Fault are mechanically linked and form a continuous fault structure. This is what we see with the Walker Lane fault system. It's various faults all together, but they act like one fault. So this is what he's saying concerning this part of the southern part of San Andreas fault as well. Continuing down with all these little smaller faults, this is this one. The analysis also suggests that the Dixieland fault in the west part of the valley, in particular, may accommodate a more significant part of the plate motion than previously suspected. Dorset noted, while the models also indicate that there may be a significant amount of seismic strain that occurs off of the faults. Like others before us, he said, we definitely suspected that there could be faults linked, linking the San Andreas to the Imperial and the Cerro Prieto faults, and it's great that our study suggests that these linking faults are needed to correctly capture the plate motions. This is what Dorset explained. And now, if we go to the population density of salt and buttes, let me see, I have it here somewhere. Population of Imperial Valley, 
it's really increased in the past, uh, uh, for, since 1980. In 1980, it was about um, 92,110. And in 2017, it's 182,830. That was two years ago. So you can see that it doubled. From 92,000, it went to 182,000. It doubled in uh, uh, 10, 10, 10, almost 40 years. Doubled. And uh, no, 17, not th 30, uh, 38 years. So if you take, it's about, um, I would say it's about uh, 10 to 20,000 more population now. So you can see there's almost 200,000 people living in that area, the Imperial County. Um, as of 2010, population was 174,000. Okay, 2017 is 182 plus. So it's really uh, increasing. And uh, it's a volcanic area, as we said. Southern California, uh, the uh, fault model shows that three-dimensional structure of major faults. Beneath Southern California, we see the San Andreas linking to other faults going through. The Southern San Andreas goes through exactly uh, Palm Springs and uh, so the uh, Salton Sea, the Imperial Valley, which is uh, a volcano there. And also you have the uh, horizontally perpendicular joining of the garlic fault uh, extending from west to east. On the east we have the Ridgecrest earthquakes, which are still going on today. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.